Assalamu alaikum friends and welcome to my channel study law with Bushra. So in this video we are going to discuss the main topic which is state. What are the essentials of state? What are its functions? Membership of state and the kinds of state. But before starting this topic if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon for latest updates. So moving towards the definition of state we can define state is a body of people organized together for maintenance of peace and justice. So according to this definition, we can say that state consists of body of people who are organized together. Why they are organized? To maintain peace and justice in society. So let's look at the history of state. Why there was a need of state? So before state, there was no organized territory. People in an unorganized form li lives like a jungle. With the passage of time, people think that there should be an organized territory for them. They started thinking to join society with proper peace and in order to end this rule of war and money and to live impartially. So, different jurists define state according to their different opinion. So first we will look at the definition of Sir John Salmon. Sir John Salmon says that state is an association of human beings established for the attainment of, for the purpose of attainment of certain ends by certain means. Means how we have to achieve peace, how we have to live peacefully. So the next uh, jurist is Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson defines state as State is a chief artificial person having certain rights and duties. The next is U.S. Supreme Court. U.S. Supreme Court defined the state as a body of free people. Means a body of free people having no power on them who are united together. Why they are united together? To enjoy peacefully what is their own and to do justice to other people. And let other people do what is their own. And let other people enjoy them with uh, pe uh, peace and justice. To live their life peacefully and with justice. So moving towards the essentials of state. What are the main essentials of state? So we can say that there are four main essentials of state. State consists of four essentials. Number one, population. Number two, territory. Number three, government. And number four, sovereignty. We will discuss these essential one by one. So first, population. We can say that for the organization, we can say that population means organization of people. Without the concept of human beings, there is no concept of state. That population should be not so small and not so large. It should be small enough to be called a state. And it should be sufficient enough to be controlled in an organized form and to be controlled by the state. Aristotle described the number of population, the number of human beings in a state as 1150. Next is territory. Territory means area. Area where human beings are organized. Area, the area should be not too small and not too large. It should be sufficient enough. It should be sufficient area means if there would be no area then how people will live in an organized form. And the area consists of land, water and air space in them. Next is government. Government is the main element of state. Government is required for controlling the population and area because state is organized for peace and orders rules and regulations that that rules and regulations are always made by the government so we can say that state is made by the government government has three main essentials government has three main pillars number one legislation number two executive and number three judiciary legislation means law making authority in government the legislation authority is legislative authority is parliament next is executive it's the work of executive is to implement the laws made by the parliament. Executive is president who implement the laws in the society. The judiciary is made for the interpretation of laws made by the parliament, by the judges in the courts. Interpretation is done by the judges in courts. 
Number fourth element is sovereignty. Sovereignty means monarch, any superior authority who demands obey. The the uh, sovereignty demand that people should follow him. In Pakistan, the sovereign authority is prime minister because in Pakistan there is a parliamentary form of government. We can uh, sovereignty is further divided into internal sovereignty and external sovereignty. When there is internal peace and external security in the um uh, state then we can say that state is internally and externally sovereign next is moving towards the functions of state so the state performs two main functions primary functions and secondary function so we will discuss primary and secondary functions one by one first moving towards primary functions primary functions uh, include internal peace and external security internal peace mean sort of peace in peace time and external security means sort of war in war time when the war arises in the country so internal peace simply refers to when the normal state is in it in its normal state when the state when the life is normally going when there is ex- internally peace in the state state is peaceful so we can so we can call this prime internal peace in primary functions next is external security external security means when the state borders are strong enough and these borders uh, um, don't allow an external interference by powerful nation in war time so moving towards secondary functions of state there are three main secondary functions performed by the state number 1 legislation number 2 taxation and number 3 social welfare activity the word legislation is derived from two words legis mean law and lation mean making so we can say that legislation means law making without law making the concept of state is in the concept of state is impossible the internal peace in the state is impossible without legislation state cannot be internally peaceful next is taxation taxation means to receive the taxes from the people generation of revenues to perform the functions for citizen of state collection of money for from the people and pay back to them in different activities in special activities in different sources next is social welfare activities social welfare activities means the activities which are conducted for the benefit of common citizen for the advantage of common people of the state these social welfare activities includes the education health sector os- hospitals roads and transport these are included in social welfare activities which are performed by the government so we can say that secondary functions are rather important than primary functions of the state how they are important because secondary functions and primary functions are interlinked if the state does not perform his primary functions then we can say that state can't be called a state a powerful state a peaceful state so this is all about functions of state the next topic is membership of state a person can be a member of state in two ways how how they are how they become the member of state number 1 by citizenship and number 2 by nationality so first moving towards the citizenship of the state citizenship is the permanent relationship between citizen and state while nationality is a temporary relationship between nation and state so according to this we can say that citizen is a part of state while national is a part of nation citizen is a part of state because it's a permanent relationship between citizen and state next is citizenship means that a citizen is a registered member of state while the national is an unregistered member if the citizen fulfill all his legal requirements all his legal requirements is fulfilled by the citizen then citizen has some legal rights on it those legal rights include 
right to cast a vote, right to stand in election. So we can say that citizen can be a national of the states. It means citizen can be a national. Citizenship is a true relationship. True relationship with the state is called citizenship. How you get citizenship? Because you are in net member of that state. That's why you are given citizenship. And we can also say that citizenship is a status of freedom along with so many responsibility. While on the other hand, if a national fulfill all the legal requirements given by the state, then he get the citizenship of the state. Nationality is not a legal relationship between the state. So, let's move towards the modes of acquiring nationality. How a person can acquire nationality? Nationality can be acquired in different ways. According to Oppenheim, a jurist of jurisprudence. First is by birth. Where you have born, the person has been born in any state, it means he get the nationality of that state like France, UK. So, the Arab can't give the nationality to any person. Next is by naturalization. So, by naturalization, the person becomes the national of the state. If the person get married to the other person living in that state, it means he get the nationality of that person, get the nationality of that state. If Second is, if you are a legitimate child of your father, then you get the nationality of that state. Next is, by acquisition of domicile, you get the nationality. Number four, by appointment of government servant. If you are appointed as a government servant in that state, that means you get the nationality of that state. And by another way of naturalization is by application. Sometimes if you give an application to the government by mentioning the reasons, then you get the nationality of that state. The third main um, mode is resumption. Means nationality can be acquired by resumption. If you already have the nationality of any state, but you lost it, then you can apply for resumption by fulfilling all the requirements of that state then you your nationality can be resumed for example in uk if you vanishes from uk for a long time period then your nationalities can be lost number fourth is subjugation when any country is subjugated by any other country then subjugated members will automatically become the member of conqueror country number five is annexation if any state surrender himself and ask to annex it with any other state then he become the member of that state. For example, Hong Kong of China annexed with England for 40 years. Next is moving towards the loss of nationality. How the nationality of person can be lost? So the nationality of person can be lost by five phase. Number one, release. Number two, deprivation. Number three, expiration. Number four, renunciation. And number five, substitution. How nationality is lost by release? When you yourself leaves your nationality, then it is called that, that you are released from your nationality. When a citizen consciously asks the government for release of his nationality, then the government released his nationality. Next is deprivation, to deprive the person. Deprivation means to deprive that person from his nationality. So, if the person has done any act which is inconsistent with law, which is inconsistent with the laws of that country, or if the civilian breaks and the rules of that country, the laws and rules of that country, then he will be deprived of his nationality. Next is expiration. Expiry, when time period of nationality is ended. Sometimes nationality is expired. For example, in UK, if any person doesn't come back for more than three years back to UK, then his nationality can be expired. In certain situation, nationality ceases due to long residence in any other state. Number fourth is renunciation to renounce. Uh, according to renunciation, if you are a citizen of one state and you are the national of another state, in case of dual nationality, you have to renounce one nationality. 
like in pakistan parliamentarians can't get dual nationality and according to the rules of usa if you are a citizen of usa and you have the nationality of any other country then it's unacceptable number 4 is 5 is substitution to substitute to replace if you yourself substitute your nationality then that nationality can be lost the difference between both of them is in renunciation you can't get dual nationality you have to uh, re- uh, renounce any nationality while in substitution you have a choice so moving towards kinds of state the last topic of state so there are two main kinds of state unitary and composite state dependent and independent state so first we will discuss unitary and composite unitary state means unitary mean one in unitary state the main power of state is vested in one central authority these states are not made up of any units because they are single unit state while for example saudi arab while on the other hand composite state comprised of various state parts are divided between the centers and units for example uk and usa dependent state means which can't compete in itself which depends on any other state for to run itself while independent state means which possess separate self existent which does not depends on anyone which compete in itself so the example of independent state is uk usa and pakistan while on the other hand the example of dependent state is the states of uk who depends for in uk there are four states ireland england netherland they depend they are not independent but they depends upon uk for their existence likewise in pakistan and kashmir kashmir depends upon pakistan for its existence so that's all about state